I, uh, yeah, I, was, I have to tell you, I'm, I'm super excited to geek out with you on uh, corporate sponsorships and purposeful partnerships today. So, so glad you're here. Thanks for having me. Yes, and we are live on Nonprofit Live. We're streaming on a couple of platforms. I'm Amy Fazio, and I'm so excited to welcome all of our viewers. Let us know if you're watching live um, or catching a replay. We're welcoming Nadia today. So good to see you. Good to see you too. Happy New Year. I think this is our first like official conversation of 2022, right? Yeah, I think it's legit. It's still Happy New Year. Yeah. Yeah, we can still get that in there. I mean, once you're crossing to February, it's kind of like, okay, we know it's the new year. <laughs> yeah, you're rounding the bend now. But yeah, happy, happy new year. You know, uh, Nadia, the, one of the reasons I'm so excited about this conversation today is uh, to pick your brain and and, um, and your expertise on the issue of, of helping businesses strategically partner with nonprofits. Yes. Over in the collab, the nonprofit collab, which is my membership group of big hearted, badass nonprofit pros. We've been planning our 2022 fundraising, you know, strategy and uh, locking in those events is so important because otherwise they can get really out of control and distracting and they're really important. Mm -hmm. yeah. And one of the things that always comes up when you're doing your event strategy are sponsorships, right? And so many nonprofits equate working with businesses to event sponsorships. And we're going to blow that myth up today. Yeah, right? so true. I hear that a lot. <laughs> yeah. So we're going to get in the head of some of these uh, businesses so we can give them what they want, really partner with them, as you said, in meaningful and purposeful ways. So we all win exactly. um, in, in meeting the mission. So welcome. Nadia, let's jump in. Can you tell us, yeah. introduce yourself and, and tell us a little bit about Alter New Media and what you do there? Yeah, absolutely. Well, thanks again for having me. I'm really excited to be here and, you know, diving into the subject as it's near and dear to my heart and has had a lot of evolution over the last few years and will have even more over the next coming maybe two or three years. So Alternative Media is a purpose forward marketing and PR agency. We support mission driven companies with achieving their business goals while also making a difference in the world. And we do that primarily through our purposeful partnership service, while, of course, we do so with all of our other services as well. But purposeful partnership is where we partner a nonprofit with a for-profit and either a short-term or a long-term campaign. And how this typically looks is, for example, with a short-term campaign, it might be a specific movement or goal with that that we're going to be cross-branding with a, a branded hashtag for example if it's running on instagram and then oftentimes we have this campaign this partnership activated by influencers who are essentially being paid for by the brand so the goal with the purposeful partnership is for the nonprofit really to not come out of pocket at all with the exception of course if they do on their own want to run you know, promotion to their cross brand campaign or something that they can do. But the goal is to really make sure that the for profit is absorbing all of the costs with respect to this partnership. If it's long term, it's usually um, going to, you know, obviously there's going to be different goals there beyond just like the specific campaign. Let's raise awareness. Let's, you know, raise some funds and then we're done versus let's have a long term working partnership we have to be really mission aligned in that case so just as an example we partnered a nephrologist a kidney doctor who has a multimedia cooking platform called the cooking doc um, he's in greenville area in south mm -hmm. carolina and we partnered him in an exclusive partnership with the american kidney fund which is the country's largest kidney um, organization and so this partnership is manifested through a lot of contributions from Dr. Blake towards their kidney kitchen, which is like healthy eating resources for people with kidney disease. Or, what a you brilliant, know. yeah, what a brilliant aligned uh, partnership. So we, we got to back up because there's so much to unpack here. And I want to no. dig into that example because yeah. that, that just makes sense, right? It's not hard. It just makes sense. Exactly. But there are so many media companies out there. There are so many marketing and, you know, even in the nonprofit space and the for-profit space, all the different pieces of it, which, of course, you do brilliantly. But this is a pretty unique niche, I think. I mean, the fact that you're basing your whole model on 
an overall strategy, but you bring this unique focus to thinking about that social exactly. responsibility. Exactly. And so, I mean, right now the purposeful partnership, it, it does kind of fold under our overall um, PR offering because we consider this a form of PR for the mm -hmm. client. Of course, you know, again, encouraging them to do good in the process of gaining that exposure and that awareness. But, you know, it is folding under that service at this point in time. However, I am actually gearing up to look into spearheading purposeful partnership as a standalone tech platform where nonprofits will be essentially in a database and will have the ability to be matched with the, the brands, but also nonprofits, not just brands for the purposeful partnership, but also to find influencers who would be willing to be pro bono ambassadors for your organization. So something I have active or about to be active now, and I know there's a lot happening here, but um, is a community where nonprofits can interact intimately with influencers who are mission driven to you know, basically get them to be ambassadors for their organizations. But my you know, real area of excitement is for sure this purposeful partnership standalone platform, which you know will require yeah. us to go through the whole traditional startup thing of doing a raise and all that. Yeah, so this is in the works, but guys, this is a very cool idea. And we've talked about it a little bit before, so you're going to have to uh, get me uh, more up to speed. But you're really creating a space where nonprofits can come together with businesses and influencers. So yeah. social media influencers, and it's sort of this trifecta of how yeah. can we come together, right? I, I know that I, I was working with um, stackup.org for many years, and that is an amazing veterans organization. We talked a little bit about it. They raise a majority of their million dollar budget from individual donors, and they do that through the power of influencers. And it's an amazing tool in, in the digital community building space to mobilize a ton of people. Um, and especially when the message aligns, it just becomes a no brainer. Exactly. 100 percent. It's just a matter of, you know, finding those appropriate matches, you know, like that's like yeah. the big thing, making sure that there is that mission alignment. In another example, we've been um, supporting a fashion app called Open Wardrobe. And the whole focus of this app is on um, fashion and sustainability or sustainability in fashion. So the concept is you have the app, you download your, your app, you can create a digital wardrobe of what you already have in your closet. So that way you're not going to be tempted necessarily to go, you know, make new purchases and especially with fast fashion. So that's the whole basis of that app. So we're like, let's figure out the best organization to partner you with for purposeful partnership. We came across a youth led organization out of Vancouver, Canada called Threading Change. And mm. so they're focus is on sustainability in fashion as well as lifting up um, marginalized voices in fashion. So what we okay, did okay. Our partnership. <laughs> uh, this is brilliant. This is so exciting. I really want to back up because yeah. um, one thing we're uh, excited to see Greg. Hey guys, thanks for joining the live. Um, good to see you uh, and Alicia yeah. and uh, Kelly. Good to see you. Um, here's what I love about what you just said. So, you are like, okay, we're, you know, part of our strategy is purposeful partnerships. I want to really emphasize two things. You said it came under public relations. I want our nonprofit pros to hear this. The, the real point of public relations for any entity is to get in front of new audiences. It's a really yeah. big, you know, that's the bottom line with public relationships. So think about it. If it's your business and you're thinking public relations, when you're approaching them, you have to, you have to understand that that that's their goal. Um, right. Maybe thinking about it from that perspective. Right. It's also a story. It's a story for the mm -hmm. business. It really, you know, makes them look good. You know, obviously, you know, businesses are going to have like some selfish element to this. Naturally, they want to like, well, you know, we love the cause and we want to give back. Sure. But what's going to happen for us? Like, how is it going to work That's for exactly us? Right. Is it going to take a lot of time and resources? What's like, what? in it for them? Right. Right. If you're and, not asking yourself, if you're like racking your brain about how do we get more businesses on board and you're not having in-depth conversation of what's in it for them, that's a right. one-sided relationship, folks. Exactly. That's what that is. Yeah. Exactly. And it is for sure the, you know, the exposure, as you said, exposure to the new audiences, um, both for the business and for the organization. Mm -hmm. And of course, as I always say, you know, look, you in this 
climate, especially, you really should position yourself as a company that cares about, you know, a cause that's either passionate to the founders or just passionate to the overall cult culture of that company. And it further reinforces that as well. It substantiates it. Okay, so the other thing you said that I really want to slow down to make sure these guys uh, are able to absorb this is you didn't spin your wheels going to a million meetings looking for a nonprofit to partner with. What I heard you say was you thought about the type of organization and mission that would be a good match, and then you went and found it. Right, correct. That's pretty intentional and very efficient use of our energy and time. I love that. Yes, guys. I mean, when you're thinking about partnerships, thinking about like, for example, I mean, if you're a nonprofit that's, you know, really working hard on animal rights, or maybe you're like an animal sanctuary, wouldn't it make sense to find an, a company that's focused on animals, you know, or providing product for animals in a way that's ethical or, you know, that's the type of partnership that you want to be looking out for. Not like, oh, well, let me just find that random law firm in town and like, get I them need the richest money. company I can find. <laughs> Right. It doesn't make sense. <laughs> or this, I hear this a lot too. Oh, well, you know how bad the economy is. People just can't give. Like as if they know what their financials are or their numbers are. Right. Or... Like, you know, you're taking yourself a hole there and we all do it. I mean, right. even as a business owner, we all have our moments, right? Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, too, sure. like, yeah. it's slow. And like, yeah. I guess means it's going to get slower. Yeah. And then you know, your mm -hmm. mind keeps going and going and going. Just try to keep yourself from going there by being proactive. Yeah, um, I, I love that. I love that intentional reaching out. What's really effective about that um, strategy and makes so much sense to me is then you can target your message very specifically and you don't have to, you know, you're not going in convincing them. You're going in with a very solid proposition. I have to, I was on a, um interview uh, not that long ago and I was explaining my process and I, I help nonprofits really build their business case and their moral story social case and their political case. That is the layered messaging you need. And I mentioned that when you go in and you share your pitch and I said, oh, we don't use the word pitch. Well, you better have some type of pitch. <laughs> you better be making a case of some kind. You can call it whatever you want, but you're going in and making a case. And so when you're contacting a company, you may not be leading with the same facts and the same messaging and the same stories as you would with individual donors or foundations. Right. It has to be different. I've had this conversation so many times with nonprofits, like if you're asked for individual donors, really does need to be structured a little bit differently than if you are approaching a corporation, whether it be for something like a partnership or just, you know, sponsoring an event. Like you just need to understand, that doesn't mean your mission's gonna change or your vision, yeah. your values. It's just like the positioning of that ask does have to, you know, be a little different. Yeah, you spotlight different things, I think, is the way that I would exp I would explain it. I, I know, for example, um, uh, working with an autism organization, and Kelly if, if is still on the call, it, we've even talked about this. If you present it just as you're getting the benefits of an event versus, you know, we can really solve isolation and help with job training to prepare a new layer of workforce yeah. for you and do social good in the world, you're helping them solve a serious problem. And if you own a business out there, you know, hiring right now is very, very difficult. So have a real conversation with a business partner about this isn't just about social groups. This is about job training. We all need this program to succeed and it's the right thing to do. And I think sometimes maybe businesses get a little like, oh gosh, like I'm just going to have to funnel a bunch of donations or like give like 50% of my revenue to the nonprofit because we're partnering you know, sometimes they will have that reaction and I respond, you know, this is more about um, like cross promotion and ensuring that the nonprofit receives the reach and impact and exposure that would lead to donations. Of course, if you can, you know, maybe restructure things to where maybe an individual product or a set of products could, um, you know, give back to 10 percent or something like that, then that would be great. But it's not absolutely that's necessary. not the only way. Yeah, and I think nonprofits, they, you know, lead with the word charity a lot. Like, I'm a charity. And, uh, that is one word I don't like. <laughs> yeah, like, me either. And I feel like when they do that, it really sets them up in a situation where it's just like, oh, like, help, help, help. And it puts a lot of pressure on the other side because they feel mm. you know, like, oh, my God, like, I can't really do what you need right now. I'm sorry. And then it's just they kind of shut down. Just like, in, you know, I, love that. I mean, to think about. 
That's huge insight, guys. You really need to hear this. So that's what they're thinking in their boardrooms, in their meeting spaces. They're saying, we want to do something, but if we start, is it ever going to be enough? Is it going to make a meaningful exactly. difference? And they'll feel like you're going to look bad. They're like, oh, we're going to look bad because we're not doing enough for this organization. So what's the point of us even trying if it's just donation-based? Like, we can't really meet these goals. Yeah, I, I think that is so meaningful. And so that call to action of different ways to get involved really has to be, that's always the case, right? We're always honing that. It has to be crystal clear of how to engage. Um, you know, businesses who want to get involved. So I uh, I love this kind of inside the head of these entrepreneurs because we hang out with a lot of entrepreneurs, right? In our in our groups. I we we have circles of businesses and they're very soul-centered people. They're very heart-centered people, no matter the size of the enterprise, generally speaking. And I hear all the time, I want to make a difference in the world. I did this because I wanted to make change. And what I find, what I hear is they just don't know how to approach a nonprofit. So here's the other thing I want to say um, to our nonprofit friends out there and our business friends out there, don't treat nonprofits with kid gloves. They need your very best and brightest. They need your hard questions. They need your hard advice, um, mm -hmm. it, not just your dollars. And so don't be afraid to approach them. Work with Donia to help you lead the way because I think they're intimidated. Yeah, I, I really do think that it has a lot to do with that. Like on both sides, though. I think so. They're either intimidated or they just don't really know how to structure the ask. Um, and so I do get that a lot from yeah. brands individuals like well how do i even approach this or what do we do and oftentimes we will create like a proposed partnership document that just mm -hmm. would out activities for each side respectively so then we can review it together and, and you know make sure it makes sense so much of it is just clarity of expectations of the relationship it's it's really good and guys this is this is true for government relationships i mean ultimately for foundation relationships clarifying the expectations and really being clear on what's in it for everybody is such an important part of having honest conversations so you can get to the really good stuff. Yes. And, you know, for nonprofits, foundations, it also has to do with expectations for your board. I've been on so many boards mm. where it's clear that that was never defined board member expectations. And it just like, it's disorganized. There's no real impact happening that could be happening. And it's a real mess. <laughs> Yeah, sometimes that disengaged board or the checked out board can feel like they don't care, but really they they're just they, they don't, don't they know how to get they don't have the guidance. They have the guidance. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They that's my new conclusion for a lot of things. They just simply don't know what to do. <laughs> and, so, and so that fear, that look of fear really is, or that that checked out look is, you know, besides making two phone calls, what what are we doing here? And uh what the board can do is really drive a good organization and, and things like purposeful partnerships to be able to hold your own in a conversation like this. The fact is a lot of people in fundraising sometimes feel they just don't know what to say. They want to call, they don't know who to call and they don't know what to say. And, and you've really said, thought through, be strategic about how you reach out and let them know you've chosen them, that you've thought right. they could be a good partner um, seems to be an important part. And if it's a bigger company, you know, think of it this way, you know, obviously the the company might not just be straight up writing you a check, but if they enter into a purposeful partnership with you and they are willing to donate a control, like a percentage of revenue or, you know, even if not, like their audiences, particularly if they're very large, are going to see your organization in their promotion. So, you know, a lot of the results and ROI, like just the impact is going to come um, buying through the exposure you're getting. Yeah. Learning to be a good partner is going to pay off, not in incremental steps, but in big quantum leaps. It's building the momentum and, and the foundation. So when you look at these partnerships, um, as you said, you need to think what the short-term and long-term goals are. I, I think that's really important. Yeah. Uh, so much good stuff here. I'm curious from, um, others, Kelly saying that, um, I think the issue we're having now is that it's a new mindset. So including training and sponsorship is uh, a huge give on our part. However, it's a new mindset for the workforce. So including training and sponsorship. So, so Kelly trains businesses how to become more autism friendly and aware. And so she's negotiating the sponsorship as well as offering to do some um, work with their teams, which is pretty yeah. neat relationship. 
cool. you all should connect actually i think yeah. there are a lot uh, of businesses we have an influencer on our board who happens to have down syndrome and she's mm -hmm. like accomplished so much she has her own cookie company called Coletti's Cookies. And Play Tell Cookies. us about that. I saw a little bit about that post, but we haven't been able to debrief. This sounds like uh, this was a project you've been working on for a little while. Oh, yes. Well, I love Colette so much. She's an amazing human. She actually reached out to me on LinkedIn maybe a year or so ago to see if um, I would be willing to help her with pro bono marketing support. And of course, I had to say yes. I'm like, oh my gosh, like she's doing so many great things. So I agreed. And um, fast forward to now, she's on our influencer division. So we mm -hmm. do have an in-house influencer division where we rep influencers and partner them with brands or pitch them for collaborations. And of course, in her case, you know, she gets a little extra TLC. We support her with her content and a lot of mentorship. Yes. So she's been up to many great things. She has her own nonprofit called Coletti's Leadership, which is all about um, empowering people with disabilities to, you know, overcome their challenges through entrepreneurship oh, nice. and her own staff also, you know, many of them have physical and developmental disabilities. And so, you know, it's a very mission driven brand. And with her, she also has her own TV show on Peacock guys, check out born for business. It's so, so good. Recently cool. on CNBC and I was in there too. So get they, out of here. It, what is it born for business? Yeah, our show is called Born for Business. It's on Peacock, and we're actually in the midst of producing a web series for her as well. So, that's, wow, that is, seems like a lot of traction, um, and ultimately a relatively short amount of time. Yeah, so we can't take credit for her show on Peacock. I mean, that's all her just being amazing. Yeah, but you know, she's she's great. Yeah, well, I mean, that's the thing is, it's having a foundation. Um, and then just putting some spotlight to it and really, you know, getting it moving and, and uh, getting some momentum uh, moving. I got to ask you, so um, two things you said, you mentioned, you know, the who decides, so bigger organizations versus smaller um, entrepreneurial type of sponsorships um, versus company foundations, right? Different ways to move money uh, in business partnerships and purposeful partnerships. What is it? What is it they are looking for? What What do you think really? What are some of the things you've heard uh, and helped to negotiate between organizations that have stood out as unique or? Well, sometimes um, you know the nonprofits when they're approached with the concept of purposeful partnership. At least at this point in time, which leads me to believe I need to do a lot more education on this uh, mm -hmm. subject. <laughs> they don't. They didn't really know like what to say or how to respond. So the first purposeful partnership we ever facilitated, it was super strategic and so much fun. It was with the Chill Foundation. That is a nonprofit that focuses on board sports for underserved youth. So whether it be snowboarding or skateboarding or surfing, um, the board sports nice. are there to essentially empower them and you know give them an outlet. So this client we were working with, who is a hip hop artist out of New York City, she's also an avid snowboarder. So we were trying to figure out a good um, place to, how do we, you know, bring more awareness to you? And I was like, before, this is before Purposeful Partnership really had a clear defined name. This is back in like 2018. And I said, I feel like we should partner her with an organization and she could be an ambassador. For them and so i did some research and i came across chill foundation which also happens to be founded by the burton brand founders so fast forward to uh -huh. later they at first were a little like perplexed by the idea like they didn't know how it would work and there goes that proposed activity stock that i prepared that kind of fleshed it out what the expectations would be on each side uh -huh. and so she became their first ever ambassador starting with the new york city location we got their kids that they support in her one of her music videos no so kidding amazing and she raised um you know a couple thousand dollars for them in the first six months of being a partner and yeah. now she's also an ambassador for burton brand so obviously that was hugely impactful for her because she brought impact and value to this nonprofit. And so the founders of the nonprofit who are the founders of burton were like let's make her um an ambassador for the the brand. So it really opened up a huge door. Uh, so it wasn't just the one relationship. It was the, the door that it opened. Yeah. yeah. The second relationship did take a little bit, maybe after a year or so of the, you know, ambassadorship nonprofit, still an ambassador for them. So it's already been almost four years. 
So that's interesting. You actually, uh, it sounds to me, you, you thought about the organizations they could uh, partner with the types of causes or issues. I teach community and civic engagement at Penn State Beaver. We've talked about that. Yeah. And when we work on our civic engagement project, you do, you talk through what do you care about? What are the causes out there? What would those causes help highlight or part of your brand it would help spotlight? And so you were trying to share a little bit about her personal interests mm -hmm. and, and what a clever way to for people to get to know her better and that do good in the world. That makes a lot of sense. So when we're approaching businesses, you can be thinking about it not only from their business mission, but also getting to know that business. This is why I'm so excited about like building out this platform, which I feel like is honestly going to be the best solution and the fastest way to scale up purposeful partnership. Because my goal is for nonprofits and brands alike to and influencers to select their interests. You know what what lights them up, and then the matches would happen through that and you know maybe one day it'll be algorithm based we'll see depending i on love this idea you know i'm i'm on board to support i love this idea i just um i love the scalability of it i just I, I love the uh the fuel that it could really put to exactly having more interesting conversations that's what it's about if i have to sell i, I when i was a ceo and we had been doing very well and it was it was uh, time for a significant leap forward. I remember going to my board and saying, do not make me go back to these companies and sell banners to them. Like I <laughs> will not do it. Like that is embarrassing. They're giving me tens of thousands of dollars and I'm talking to them about logos on projector slides. You know, it, it's we're missing we're missing the conversation, I think. So um, it gets so much more fun when you have something to talk about that's not just the four sponsorship benefits um right it be so like oh my gosh like here's another sponsorship deck like you're gonna get like to speak like the vip it's not I've, fun to sell i've created decks like oh, this yeah. that's what the nonprofits. you know back and then it was like 2017 i think i was working on one that's what they wanted and so you know it's a little more challenging this is before the purposeful partnership concept even came in my it's head probably led to <laughs> Probably. Sorry. <laughs> you were traumatizing. We couldn't really make much headway with the deck. I mean, even though it looked great, but it's just like, oh, okay, like here's another one of these probably is what they're thinking. They on get their so many of them too. Yeah. Exactly. And it and we get trapped in thinking it's about the widgets. It's about the benefits. It's about the, the bottle of wine on the table or the ability to speak or the logo on the website and that stuff. It's not to say it's not important but it's not enough. It's not, it's same thing with fundraising. It's surface relationship building. I think you're saying there's a path to go deeper with it. If you can really That's listen. And exactly. And it's like brands, like there's nothing stopping you either um, from having more than one purposeful partnership. Now, of course, I would encourage you to try and find one long-term partner and then maybe, you know, depending on how you structure that agreement, um, it could be, like something else, like probably with the platform, I'm going to be encouraging max of four partnerships per year. So like one per quarter max for companies. Like I want to develop. Oh, I see. Yeah. Like we'll literally like not let them. <laughs> Here's something else I want to throw in here. Cause I like that. Cause you have the short term project thing and you could think of it quarterly. That, that makes a lot of sense. I do see businesses. And I think this happens too. Tell me if you hear this also. They think that it's um, doesn't demonstrate enough humility by bragging about their purposeful partnership. So sometimes they're serving on boards, business owners or, or business leaders are serving on boards or they're and it's almost like, well, I donate. I just don't want to make a big deal out of it. I don't want to brag about it. And uh, right. I'm thinking, oh, yeah. no, please brag about it. <laughs> heard about that before but i mean again that's very specific to just like writing a check typically uh -huh. versus creating a campaign that's cross-branded cross-promoted and it's like you're raising awareness for something specific like with the threading change open wardrobe we came up with the the hashtag stitch by stitch so that was the name of the campaign like threading everything together yeah and even the partnership you could say you know that was stitch by stitch it came together so that was the whole like thrust of that and it's like if you have you know this like that's gonna be much more empowering and like impactful with audiences and so Definitely in this platform, I aim to have a solution to where it will be easy to build these campaigns or else, of course, companies can work with a partner agency like us. 
Yeah, exactly. And that's always a good idea because uh, you can put them in place and get them moving and be more productive faster. So it's just, I think, a big part of the question. Here's the other thing I'm hearing you say. <clears throat> if you're making this big recommendation to your, your clients, to your, the businesses you're working with, and you're connecting them with nonprofits you may know or you're getting to know, you must have a very uh, fairly stringent vetting process. It's not just any nonprofit with any kind of mission, even if it sounds good, which is that I think it's important we hear that your interest or your passion isn't always enough. There's actually a, 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 a vetting process. How does that look for you formally or informally? Yeah, I mean, definitely we want to look at aligned missions and audiences too, because it's like, if it's going to be a partnership, it's going to be cross promoted. We want the audience of the nonprofit or the audience of the brand for that matter to be aligned. That way there is for sure going to be impact there, like with threading change and open wardrobe, super aligned. I mean, sustainability right yeah. board and Dr. Blake of the cooking doc and American kidney fund super aligned like hello like he's a kidney doctor and he has a multimedia you know platform and then they are um you know kidney nonprofit. so i feel like you know you want to make sure that it's aligned and not random um now of course i have gotten some founders who have their like hearts in specific places but yeah it doesn't really align with the company or what the company is doing and so i let them know i'm like you know i love that you're personally passionate about this but you know, we want to look at the big picture here and your company is doing X, Y, and Z. And so I think strategically it would make sense to find an organization that is doing similar like X, Y, and Z. So we are in the process of trying to um, facilitate a partnership with a surrogacy agency. And so obviously they are for profit, but very specific. The you know target audience is three prong, egg donors, potential surrogates, and potential parents. Mm -hmm. So for this, you know, we want to find an organization that's really about like babies and children, but you know, it just has to be so specific. It has to be really niched down <laughs> and yeah. that, that could be a little challenging to find, but you, you know, it's a really sexy issue right now. That's getting a lot of traction is any early childhood education, early childhood care. I mean, if our economy hasn't learned anything this last pandemic, I guess this this most recent pandemic, is how important those organizations, those service providers are to our economy, to our families, to our social fabric. I just think if, if you're in that area of early childhood education, approaching businesses um, who really have felt firsthand the importance of your role could make sense for some organizations. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's also just like people not wanting to be creative or just too lazy to be creative. And that kind of like keeps the door shut to new opportunities, too. It's like think yeah. outside of the box and thinking of a way that could be creative. I mean, going back to the PR conversation, a lot of folks will come mm -hmm. to me and are just straight up like, hey, can I get in Forbes? And I'm like, why? And like, what's your story? You know, <laughs> like you need a good story. And of course, a purposeful partnership when deployed the right way is an amazing story. It has press like appeal. <laughs> it has press appeal. And what I love, I hear you saying, what I coach my um, nonprofits and businesses when I talk to them about approaching nonprofits is don't fake it. Like right? these are teenagers that we're going to see right through it. It's not going to work. It's going to backfire. It's not right. about faking it. And I hear you really emphasizing that authenticity, that it, that alignment really represents that integrity. Exactly. Yes, yes. I mean, for consumers, especially who are more cause oriented now than ever before. Oh my gosh. The, the research is through the roof, guys. Yeah, they're really looking yeah. for companies that, you know, are all about like, you know, their mission. So nonprofits, you know, you can easily pull stats around cause marketing around the importance of, you know, consumers and just how conscious they've become and use that um, as part of your ask or part of your reasoning why the relationship could be so beneficial to that company rather than just be like, oh, you know, we're saving the world. Can you please donate 10 grand? Like that's not going to happen. <laughs> it's a tough business pitch. I mean, we can't say pitch. I mean, it's a tough. <laughs> Wait, what was that? Um, except for you can say anything to me except for charity. I just that word still does drive me crazy. So we all have our words, I guess. Right. Yes, I hear it a lot still. And I mean, I feel it's very antiquated now, but I still occasionally hear it.
it, it does. It represents the mindset of um, really pushing the social and moral reasons only for donating. And, you know, what we're both saying is you have to have a layered message that really speaks to the economic, the political and the social uh, reasons that society takes action. Um, Kelly's saying it's always seems that the biggest partnerships come with someone in the organization that has a why. And my experience has been the person in charge is affected in some way. Yeah. Um, yeah. It, it, I think that's really true. And I think it's um, doing a little bit of listening again, back to the listening to find out where those, those triggers are, where those interests are exactly. uh, far, far before you're even talking about a transaction. I also want to note that if you are a small nonprofit and you're like, well, this is great. Like I really want to do purposeful partnerships. Now I'm going to reach out to Walmart or I'm going to reach out to Macy's like guys, don't do that. I mean, I'm not saying that that could never happen for you, but the best you're going to be better off starting like in a similar, like, okay, like my nonprofit is small. So I'm going to reach out to a brand that isn't necessarily small, but they're up and coming. They have an audience, but they're not like, you know, a household name just because yeah. think of it this way. Again, that household name, do you think they would be more inclined to partner up with a national nonprofit? Probably so, because they also feel like their brand integrity needs to be matching with something that is, um, in their view, has a longer track record of doing good, et cetera. That doesn't mean that you're not doing good. It just means that, you know, you want to look at, like, you know, even the playing field. <laughs> yeah, well. matching the audience. Uh, I yeah. mean, it goes back to your statement around matching the audience a bit. And um, that's part of the vetting process. It's not personal. And it's not just because if we could only get them to care more. Uh, when we're looking, yes, it ticks all the boxes for my social interests and my desire to make a difference. Does it also tick all the boxes to make good business sense, you know, to pass it through their board of trustees, to pass it through their leadership team? It has to be about more than one person's big heart. It, you have to be able to build a case. So don't go talking to these companies when you don't know things like the size of your database, right? That's not going to help them determine or vet you whether you're a good partner. You have to know some basic metrics and have a sense of the things yeah. to talk about. When you talk about smaller organizations, and let's just say orgs that maybe are $100,000 um, and less, 10 to 100 or even to 250, you might think about smaller organizations through your chamber of commerce. They might be more regionally or locally driven. Mm -hmm. And when you're at 500 to 2 million and up, you might be looking at larger regional or national um, companies. So, yeah, there's different ways to slice that, but excellent point. Um, yeah. Absolutely. They'd be remiss if they weren't doing their vetting um, because there are 1.5 million nonprofits. They can have a big heart and go a lot of places to get the job done. And if, if yeah. we take that personally, instead of really decide to be strategic about it, use that information as strategy. Um, yeah. I mean, for that alignment. So if it's too disjointed, it might not work. Yeah. And then it becomes work. And for it to streamline into what you're already doing, that it doesn't become another thing that, yes, it's going to take time and attention. But I, I like you said it earlier that um, it has to align so that um, it, it doesn't distract us. It move, it propels you forward. But one thing I do want to note is that if you as a nonprofit, say you are a smaller nonprofit, you don't have a lot of funds coming in the door yet or you're like only one or two years old and you really have your heart set on a purposeful partnership with a bigger company, um, then I would suggest trying to find an influencer who is somewhat well-known and also, again, brand aligned with your target. Try and see if you can make them your ambassador because then that brand might be like, wow, okay, you have this person attached to your nonprofit. All right, we'll think about it. It's all about brand authority. Yeah, when I was working in energy efficiency as uh, the CEO working in um, making existing houses use less energy, we, you know, we re I remember writing to Tim Cook of Apple, like, you know, this is a good cause for the right person. Um, yeah. And we, we, you know, no response, yeah. but still, <laughs> it was, we yeah. put the case together and you never yeah. know. <laughs> I just don't always get answered, even when people say that they'll take a pitch. I mean, I know this being in PR, like, you know, I get people who respond from the New York Times it's like, okay, I'll look at the pitch. It doesn't mean they are going to respond or it's the right fit for them at the end of the day. But at least you're able to get that door open or at least crack. There's an aperture there. 
there's an aperture, you have some hope. <laughs> you have some hope. And if you don't show up, the chances go way down <laughs> for something magical to happen. And it's really about us building our muscle and flexing our muscle and um, growing our confidence and our skills around it. The opportunity is either this one or the one around the corner. It's just how ready we are um, exactly. to go after it. So you're saying build, build the readiness. Um, I, this is, this is by far my favorite. This is some of my favorite fundraising because it's right up there with major donors. The conversation just gets so much meatier. It's more one-to-one. -one. Um, you just can't be giving that same kind of attention to hundreds of individual donors. Uh, I'm not going to get into how we need to be thank you noting everybody you do, but you, you're only a human being. So you That's have to be strategic. Young, guys. Like have a, an active campaign or a MailChimp account. Like, you know, moving those individual donors like a machine. Yeah. Yeah. I don't like literally hand like write something individually for each person unless like, you know, you maybe your strategy is like, okay, people that donate over a certain amount, we will send the handwritten mm -hmm. note. I mean, I get handwritten notes from like big organizations and like, I know this is not handwritten, but I understand that. Like, it's fine. Like, I love what they're doing. Like, That's I it. They're rooting for us. They're not judging yeah. us. They're rooting for us. Exactly. <laughs> it's a purposeful partnership. It's not a random acquaintance, right? Exactly. Um, Claudia is saying this sounds very beneficial. Good. So we've got Claudia fired up about some intentional relationship building and Kim is on the call. Hey, Kim. Kim's powerhouse of intentional relationship building partnerships. She's working on working with some other nonprofits. So many pro-life nonprofits would embrace the surrogacy companies, if not Catholics. Uh, you're right. So again, be very clear. Where is the mission? I, I like to talk uh, my clients through the who cares. You know, when you right. can take the charge out of it, just really ask who else cares about this as much as we do? our vendors because they're making money from us. And if we go under, they stop making money. They care, right? Yeah. <laughs> right? Our suppliers or um, they, uh, what associations care, what elected officials care, what type of individuals care. It's all about um, relationships, marketing, PR, fundraising. It's all about relationships and psychology. So if you can yeah. crack that, you're going to be in a good place. Might still yeah. take some time, but it will happen. And I do think as an industry, we get, we trip up on the thank you notes as the relationship building strategy. And it is an important one, but if that's, if that's your core strategy, um, you're missing like 300 days out of the year <laughs> where you could really be building yeah. meaningful relationships. That alone. And also think about like, if you do have a purposeful partnership, then you can do like virtual events. Another one that we facilitated was um, with, a dress for success location here in Las Vegas. And this was a short term partnership. It was the end of 2020. Um, couldn't do anything in person here in Vegas, still really not, not much. And so we were working with an app that works to empower local Las Vegas businesses. So I'm like, okay, local Las Vegas businesses, workforce, dress for success, helping people get back in the workforce. That's the partnership. So, so we did um, a virtual panel. I pulled in some pretty well-known influencers that are local to the area, and we were able to raise funds for the organization while basically we positioned Be Right Back, the client, as a sponsor of the event. So mm -hmm. the founder could come in and explain his you know, mission and cause and trust for success. Rep could come in and explain the mission and cause of the nonprofit and and we had a candid conversation about, you know, the you know state of businesses and or the state of the local economy in Las Vegas and just having conversation about how businesses can get back up and running again. So that was pretty much the thrust of it. And how Dress for Success plays a role in preparing the workforce so that businesses can thrive. I mean, it just makes good sense, right? Exactly. Yeah, looking for that synergy. 1.5 million nonprofits. It's it's about standing out. It's about finding your unique niche. And wow, Nadia, you found a really cool unique niche. And I I mean I talk to and work with, you know, hear from different people in the media space, and um, nobody's talking about this, and nobody uh, that I've seen is really approaching it this strategically. I definitely talking about it more. It's always about like, okay, I'm doing all this, you know, great stuff. <laughs> I need to find the time to actually write about it, put more content out there. But I love hearing that feedback because I, you know, it really is something I'm passionate about. I'm just so excited about the potential of scaling it up with this 
um, technology because I really think that's going to be the most expeditious way to get it in front of more people versus the, you know, handcrafted purposeful partnership that, you know, we facilitate, of course. That's not going to go away, but we still want a, a way to scale it up. Yeah, now that you've got your steps boiled down, now it's time to scale it. Exactly. And I love your um, your your tagline where purpose and profit are not mutually exclusive, right? And I, yeah. we got to get comfortable talking about money, talking about profit, talking about um, purpose as, um, as necessary in coming together. No mission, uh, no money, no mission. It's really that simple. Exactly. And you know, it's funny, a lot of people when they read that initially, they read it as purpose is more important than profit or purpose over profit. And I'm like, well, you know, that's not actually what that means. Like mm -hmm. it's purpose and profit are not mutually exclusive. You know, we need to be able to profit to keep being purpose forward. Like this is a reality, but mm -hmm. likewise, in order to be profitable, you have to have a clear why. So it is reflexive. It is. That's well, that's well said. And, and nonprofits need to hear that too, right? Like we, uh, you have to be able to talk to businesses and be comfortable enough talking about money and profit and use words like profit um <laughs> and sales and you know words you know in, in nadia in our world uh you, and you may be familiar in nonprofits we don't say marketing we say outreach or we don't you know and we're hiding around these things so we can fit them in grants and ridiculous stuff i and know it, and i was working with someone um gosh pretty early in my marketing journey i think this was back in 2016 or 2017 2016 so he is a consultant working both on the grant making um side and then also on the nonprofit side and his whole like tagline was think money first so stop you know having the scarcity mindset nonprofits like you are not like you need to think like a business even though you are a nonprofit like as he said earlier you're getting out of that charity type mindset well, you know, at Magnify Your Mission, we're a big fan of it's a tax code, not a religion. And so we have to we have to run it like uh, this, the business structure that it is. So I uh, couldn't agree more. Nadia, how can folks stay um, stay in touch and and keep up with what you're working on? Any any uh, suggestions yeah, for us? Absolutely. So I would be happy to get on a 15 minute call um, with any of you just to follow up on what we discussed today. It would be my pleasure no cost for that. So I do have That's a link amazing. in that box here. I'm not really sure if everyone can see that, um, but I can always email you the link to Amy if you need me to. But it is there in the chat box. You can find our company at just very simple, alternewmedia.com. Um, you can follow me on Instagram at Nadia Rousseau. And our Instagram for the company is Alter New Media. You can also feel free to send me a friend request and a message here on Facebook pretty easy to find yeah exactly tracker down alter new media i'm gonna add the banner. i can add banners that's the best i can do right now but we're gonna go back and add the links um afterward in the comments so stay tuned uh but you can follow and of course uh in the in the intro we tagged you so people can message you messenger you and follow you on on social media this is such a good conversation God, like, so fun. Like to be part of this purposeful partnership journey maybe even getting a quote or two from you about you know why you think this is something that's ne needed because again like if it's going to be a technology we are <laughs> going to probably have to do a raise for this so yeah well good Let, let's let's get that money moving because it's going to help so many raise so much more money uh nadia i know you've uh, done been generous in doing um training sessions for non-profit collab members um my inner circle group so i'm gonna i'm gonna be um pinging you to see if if you might be able to come back and go a little bit deeper with us on a on a few things that's amazing sure. be my pleasure we got to break down these barriers and get people reaching out to each other yeah thank you so much thanks for listening and following along we got some really great uh comments and in, engagement today and um uh stay tuned if you want to learn more about how you can build your fundraising muscle so you're ready to work with nadia and you're ready for those conversations the Supercharge Your Fundraising workshop is coming up and there'll be information about that too uh, that I'm hosting in the comments as well. Awesome. Thanks Nadia, so much. So fun. Thank you. Have a great day. Enjoy that sunshine out there. <laughs> Bye. Take care. Bye everyone.